Osio Nagad, Jennifer Lauren Dawado. Hello, everyone. I'm Jennifer Lauren, Cherokee Nation citizen and host of Osio Voices of the Cherokee People and Senior Director of Cherokee Film. Welcome to Chalagi, wherever we are. In today's episode, we'll explore several branches within Cherokee Nation businesses and learn how these efforts support not only Cherokee Nation, but also cultural perpetuation and communities throughout the reservation. But before we go further, we want to let you know that everyone participating today, whether in studio or working remotely, has been fully vaccinated and given a COVID-19 test before entering the building. Our staff, guests, and crew are following social distancing best practices. In today's episode of Chalagi, Wherever We Are, Cherokee Nation Principal Chief Chuck Hoskin Jr. will deliver his remarks. Then he will join CEO of Cherokee Nation Businesses, Chuck Garrett, and me. After that, we'll see the ways that CNB uses the power of culture to fuel our work. Next, Deputy Chief Brian Warner joins Vice President of Cultural Tourism Travis Owens and me for a rich discussion about culture and businesses, followed by a discussion with plant manager Adrian Sinclair with the 1839 Meat Company, operated by CNB. Then we'll, we'll be joined by Tribal Counselor Dora Patskowski. And finally, I will be closing out our program today by talking about the power of Cherokee Nation Film Office under CNB. But before we start, I'll turn it over to Deputy Chief Brian Warner, who will lead us in prayer. Deputy Chief. See you on God. Join me in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you for this day, Lord. We thank you for this time of fellowship and all the blessings that you give each of us. Lord, help fill our vessels with the courage and the understanding so that we, that we realize that the business that we do each and every day is your business, Lord, and give us that strength to stay in that, that lane that you have provided, Lord. Help us to lift up one another. Help us to be our brother and sister's keeper as we go through each day, Lord, and help us to remember those who are less fortunate than others. And during this holiday season, Lord, help us to remember your son that was sent here for the salvation of all. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Wado, Deputy Chief. And now it's my pleasure to introduce my friend and Principal Chief Chuck Hoskin, Jr. for his remarks. Chief Hoskin. Osio, welcome to another edition of Cherokee, Wherever We Are. Today, we're taking a closer look at the success of Cherokee Nation businesses. CNB is unique and isn't like any other business. Our tribal government is the sole owner or shareholder of CNB. The CNB board of directors are all citizens of the Cherokee Nation and have all been confirmed to their positions by your elected representatives on the Council of the Cherokee Nation. The Cherokee people, through their elected representatives, have a powerful voice when it comes to our businesses. Together, our government and businesses create an annual economic impact of more than $2 billion. With more than 7,500 CNB employees, we are able to have a business presence throughout the United States and in more than 25 other countries. As the economic engine of the tribe, CNB reinvest 100% of its profits directly into benefiting the tribe. That provides financial stability by funding critical services and programs for our people, including health care, education, and housing. CNB, like any other successful company, continues to experience change as it grows, but the values, focus, and commitment to the Cherokee Nation and the Cherokee people is constant. And that will always be true. CNB's baseline value is to take care of our people and our businesses from entertainment to federal contracting to cultural and economic development to manufacturing are united by this shared purpose of serving our citizenry. Our teams of experts in contracting, service, and technical industries keep CNB at the forefront of exciting changes all over the world. But diversifying our businesses would have never been possible without our success as a market leader in entertainment and hospitality. As we grow, I am more excited than ever. We have launched multiple new endeavors, including the Cherokee Nation Film Office, which squarely puts our tribe at the forefront of the emerging film and TV production industry in Oklahoma. It's an industry the State Department of Commerce has said is a core industry for the state. 
We've also launched the 1839 Meat Company. This strategic endeavor will help us better address food insecurity within our reservation and help ranchers with access to local food processing. Our cultural and economic development arm continues to grow with new additions across the reservation, including new tourism attractions in Cherokee and Craig counties. On the gaming front, we are pursuing opportunities outside our reservation to ensure we keep growing and remain the market leader people have come to know and trust, whether it's gaming or any of the many other business sectors that CNB invest resources into. It's important to remember this. These are all investments designed to increase employment for the Cherokee people and increase revenue to grow programs and services to support the Cherokee people and the communities where they live. Our success is a direct reflection of our CNB leadership and our committed workforce. We'll hear more later from CNB CEO, Cherokee Nation citizen, Chuck Garrett on his vision for growth. However, I do wanna take a moment and highlight just how valuable our employees are. Our CNB employees are the key to our continued success. CNB's mission is to create jobs for Cherokees. That is why we are doing more than ever to ensure their well-being as well as their families. We've raised the minimum wage at CNB and instituted expanded parental leave policies. By keeping salaries and benefits competitive in the market, we ensure that we remain an employer of choice at CNB. During the COVID pandemic, the health and safety of our employees and communities remained a priority. Even though our business units were shuttered, our fiscal stewardship put our employees' families first and ensured we would make payroll each and every month. I want to thank our CNB leaders for working with Deputy Chief Warner and me to ensure that no CNB employee missed a paycheck as a result of the pandemic. The Cherokee Nation has built its legacy on resiliency, determination, and perseverance. The pandemic proved we continue that legacy today at CNB. CNB's business success started at Cherokee Nation Industries in 1969. Chief Keeler knew good jobs could empower Cherokee citizens and communities. Those values remain the same. Chief Mankiller added gaming operations, and that added to our foundation of success that we still see. Our team of experts that lead CNB today keep us at the forefront of exciting changes across the country and all over the globe. And those endeavors benefit us right here at home. From healthcare and education to housing and good paying jobs, taking care of our people is the essence of CNB. What do? Wado Chief, now Chief Hoskin joins CEO of Cherokee Nation Businesses, Chuck Garrett, and me to talk about the ways that CNB functions as the economic engine for Cherokee Nation. Mr. Garrett, Chief Hoskin, thank you very much for joining us and sharing your thoughts on this topic. So, Mr. Garrett, starting with you, for those of us that work for Cherokee Nation and our businesses, we have a pretty good understanding of each entity and how they all work together. But for those viewers who maybe aren't familiar, if you could explain what Cherokee Nation Businesses is and how it works to support the nation. Certainly, and thanks for having us today, Jennifer. Um, Cherokee Nation Businesses is uh, the business of the Cherokee Nation. We are owned by the Cherokee Nation, and we serve the Cherokee Nation in several ways. Uh, one is to be a job creator, uh, to also help the Cherokee Nation economy grow, and also to uh, provide a dividend so that the legislature, the tribal council, uh, and the chief and his administration can determine how to appropriate funds to provide support for programs that are much needed throughout the, throughout the Cherokee Nation. Absolutely. Um, so, Chief Hoskin, we've heard uh, Mr. Garrett describe the investment that CNB makes into our Cherokee communities through the reservation. Can you talk a little bit about the overall economic impact that CNB has throughout the state of Oklahoma and why that's important, maybe? It's tremendous. Uh, I mean, we've measured it, uh, number one, and, and our, the entirety of our operation, business and government, is over $2 billion uh, annually. 
thousands of jobs are created directly by CNB. So we're talking about, I think, somewhere on the order of 7,500 CNB employees and, and, and many thousand government employees. So the total workforce is over 11,000 system wide. And you think about what that means. It means Cherokee people living in our communities, earning a good living and, and spending that money in their local communities. And that creates this vibrancy that I think would not exist if it wasn't for the way we've arranged our businesses uh, to operate as businesses and, and bring in revenue and create these jobs. Uh, if it wasn't arranged in that way, we would see much less of that goodness that comes from economic impact of, uh, again, more than $2 billion a year. But dollars are one thing. Uh, but if you talk to people who work for CNB and talk to people in their communities, there's a real sense that Cherokee Nation and CNB is just the difference maker in these communities. It makes them better places to live. And that makes me proud as chief. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, Chuck, there are several different branches under the umbrella of CNB. So um, can you tell us what each of these different branches is and how they each support the economic engine that is CNB? Sure. Cherokee Nation Businesses is really the holding company of all of our businesses. So we have two uh, profit engines, if you will, uh, and one uh, business line that is attending to the nation's needs through cultural tourism, our film office, for example, as well as some economic development efforts that uh, the chief and others help uh, lead. Uh, the food security uh, efforts that we've had with our, our food processing plant, for example, our PPE manufacturing uh, is another example of that cultural and economic development mm -hmm. uh, business arm. Uh, the Cherokee Nation Entertainment, which is our gaming business, which uh, uh, oversees the 10 properties we have within the Cherokee Nation, as well as the expansion into commercial gaming elsewhere. Uh, and finally, Cherokee Federal, which is our federal contracting business, oversees the businesses and the execution of contracts around the world. And so we try to provide distinct uh, operating units so they can focus on their business. And Cherokee Nation Businesses provides that, that support uh, for, for those to be, those units to be all they can be. I have to say, uh, you know, I feel like all employees of CNB and Cherokee Nation are sort of ambassadors for our tribes and our businesses. And I, out in the communities, people really just, they're curious to know what's going on here. And they all seem to be, be you know, so supportive and, and they just love to see what all we're doing um, at, with our tribe and all of our businesses. Um, so Chief Hoskin, uh, Mr. Garrett just mentioned Cherokee Federal, but we say CFED. Um, uh, would you give us a little bit more information about the type of work that happens with CFED and why you think it's important? Well, I think it's important because it is the opportunity for Cherokee Nation through our businesses to show the world that we can provide any number of services really better than anyone. And we proved it. I mean, CFED is primarily in the business of contracting with the government of the United States, providing services uh, that uh, need to be delivered in this country. And more often than not, it's Cherokee Nation that the government of the United States is looking to. Now, now think about that, talking to the mm -hmm. Cherokee people about how strong we are as a nation. It's the United States coming to the Cherokee Nation asking for us to step up and deliver really indispensable services across a broad range of uh, sectors. Uh, and that makes me proud. Uh, it creates employment. Uh, we create employment across the country and around the world because that's where these contracts are. But it creates a lot of employment here at home because mm -hmm. managing these contracts, and Mr. Garrett is, 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 is and his team are the ones responsible for this, and they do it so well. Uh, but there's a core of employees that grow and grow and grow as this contract, as these contracting opportunities grow and grow and grow. So uh, we're just, we're uh, administering good services, managing uh, the affairs of uh, these different contracts, and doing it in a way that brings dollars back home that get reinvested in all of the things that we really care about, uh, from education to housing to healthcare. But it's happening because we are proving that there's nobody better to provide these services than the Cherokee Nation. Absolutely. Uh, Mr. Garrett, CNB is governed by a 17-member board of directors, all of whom are Cherokee citizens. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us um, a little bit about how the board represents the interests of Cherokee people and our families and our communities? Be happy to. And, and the 
board of directors is really the governing body uh, around the businesses. Uh, each of them is a, nominated by the principal chief, uh, confirmed by the tribal council. Uh, so there is a vetting process that goes on, but then there's a delegation of authority. And that has really led in, uh, to uh, a company that is uh, enjoys great governance. And it really has been a difference maker between uh, our business and many other tribal businesses. Uh, they are uh, business people that are very in tune with what we're doing. So our strategies, our, our uh, different decisions are vetted by that governing body. And, uh, and they have the best interests of the Cherokee Nation in, in, in mind. So very, very important to our success. Well, that's one of those those core things that it all comes back to. Everybody here has the, the you know the best interests of the Cherokee people yeah. in mind, which is really special. Yeah, it's that power of purpose that we talk about a lot, and you know, really is motivating, and it is it is a a bond. Absolutely, Chief. What are some of uh, CNB's priorities in terms of supporting communities throughout the reservation and beyond? Well, first and foremost, you have to think about the revenue that's generated uh, and then comes to the nation in the form of a dividend. And so people out in the communities uh, may have a, a son or daughter that gets a scholarship. They may go to one of our new health centers and enjoy the services provided there. Uh, they may have a, a grandmother who needed help with housing and, and has gotten in the past few years maybe a new roof or something like that. I could go on and on, but what really uh, I want the Cherokee people to, uh, to, to know is that so much of that is provided by our business revenue. And if we didn't have that, if the men and women of Cherokee Nation businesses weren't working hard every day to be so successful like they are, we couldn't have all these programs because if we waited on the United States, frankly, to meet its obligation to fund a lot of these programs, we'd be waiting a long time. And we have been waiting a long time. We keep pushing the United States to do more, but we're not waiting around because we don't have to because we have businesses that generate so much hope and opportunity through the revenue that's uh, brought to the tribe. So that's where we start. But uh, where I, what I'm really sometimes blown away by is the people that work for CNB, they work so hard, full-time jobs, and then they're out volunteering in the community, and you see it all the time. In fact, CNB has a sort of a formal structure to encourage uh, employees to volunteer, and they do so in a way that makes a difference in the lives of people across communities. And so when I see that, I just become so proud of this workforce um, because they're doing what really Cherokee people have always done, which is to serve each other, think about ourselves as really uh, a group of people that have this collective uh, interest, this collective destiny, this, this ancestry that we have in common, and we act like it, and that's what CMB employees do without fail. Yeah, it's beautiful really to see it in action. So this last question is for both of you. Um, as you've mentioned, a percentage of revenue generated by CNB goes directly to the tribe and is invested in services and programs for families like health services, education, housing, and other services in local communities. So there are so many ways that CNB benefits Cherokee communities and families. What are each of you most proud of and why is it so important to you? I'll start with you, Chief. Well, you know, that's a tough one because I have a sense as chief of every one of these programs and how they've grown exponentially as a result of the revenue uh, that CNB brings in. But I have to say, uh, healthcare, yeah, I'm gonna take two answers here. Healthcare, <laughs> I think is uh, so impactful because we all have a stake in good health individually and collectively. And I've seen what a difference it's made for us to be able to uh, look at the revenue from Cherokee Nation businesses and, and build hundreds of millions of dollars in new healthcare facilities that just wouldn't exist if we didn't have those dollars. Something else that's near and dear to my heart, we're making this historic effort to save the Cherokee language. And again, we're not waiting around in the United States to fund it all. We are looking at our business revenue and saying the time is now to save the Cherokee language. And we're doing it because of the revenue that comes from CNB. And if we didn't have that revenue, I couldn't sit here as chief and tell both of you and our audience that we are going to save the Cherokee language. And I just hope that every CNB employee knows that and feels pride in that. And I think if you know it, you got to be proud of it. But we owe it to CNB in terms of the revenue we're able to put to that effort. So I'm giving two answers for that one. <laughs> well, I couldn't agree more on both of those points. I and mean, when we drive by the clinic, we drive by the Durban Feeling Language Center, those are uh, moments of great pride for us. 
We know that everything we do reflects on the Cherokee Nation, and that's a great responsibility when you recognize that. Uh, so we have that that potential to make people proud. We also have that potential to 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 uh, make people concerned. You know, so it's a it's a something that we have to be very uh, careful with the reputation of the nation. So that's something that is is very important to us. And as we build a durable and sustainable uh, company with diversified cash flows for the growing needs of the, of the nation, uh, it's something that I feel greatly proud of and I think my colleagues do as well. Right, I know certainly um, our teams here, we all feel a great amount of pride working for our tribe and for Cherokee Nation businesses. So that's it for us today. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedules and share your thoughts with us today. Um, and of course, for those of you out there, if you'd like to learn more about CNB and perhaps check out our open jobs, you can visit CherokeeNationBusinesses.com. Now let's take a look at a short video showing how CNB supports the work of Cherokee culture through the power of purpose and teamwork. A lot of people see us, they see the casinos, they see car tags, but they don't know anything maybe about the culture. Even growing up, our history wasn't there. It's really just a hand-in-hand -hand commitment to one another. I feel blessed to work for an organization and to be a member of a tribe that puts so much of its resources into preserving its history and culture. We could not do what we do without Cherokee Nation businesses. My name is Kristen Mosier, and I'm the Cultural Collections and Exhibits Manager. Donna Tennant, Manager, Cultural Resources Planning and Development. I'm Mary Kay Henderson. I direct the Cherokee National Youth Choir. Too often, history is told from another point of view. Because a lot of people still think we live in teepees. My mission is to make sure the Cherokee Nation story is told by Cherokee voices. The people at CMB have always been so totally gracious to us. CNB is right there to just push it right on through. And I'm thankful for that because it's a teamwork. It truly is what makes me happy to know that we all work together as a team, collectively through the nation, through CNB, and to see what we're able to accomplish. That's what I'm most proud of. When the Cherokee National History Museum first opened, I was able to witness somebody coming in and seeing the exhibits which tell the story of Cherokee Nation from time immemorial to present for the very first time. And this woman broke down in tears because she understood what we were trying to say and she understood the Cherokee story that was being told in our own voices. They're going to hear the authentic Cherokee story and nobody else will be telling those stories. To see so many families, kids, elders enjoying our programs, our sites, our museums, these beautiful structures that we've been able to build or that we've been able to renovate, and to know that long after I leave Cherokee Nation businesses, to know that the things that we've been able to work on will continue and they'll grow, it makes me very, very happy. They're all memories. They're all things that make us who we are and, and push us into the future. And I think the future looks pretty bright from the kids that I've been around. I'm proud. I'm proud. I am a proud Cherokee citizen. That was a great introduction to our next segment where I am pleased to talk with Deputy Chief of the Cherokee Nation, Brian Warner, and Travis Owens, Vice President of Cultural Tourism with Cherokee Nation Businesses. Gentlemen, Wado, for joining us today. Um, and quickly, before we get going, I'd like to acknowledge that Molly Jarvis, Executive Vice President of Marketing and Cultural Tourism, was supposed to join us today, but was unable to do so due to COVID. But we're happy to say that she's doing well, and we're happy that you were able to step in here, Mr. Owen, so thank you. Well, thank you for having us. Yes. Okay, um, 
So Deputy Chief, before becoming Deputy Chief, you taught science at Carl Albert State College and education has always been central to your work. So would you speak to the ways that CNB's efforts support education and how that has real impacts for Cherokee people and families? Well, I think first and foremost, when you take a look at it and, and first, thank you for, for having me here today. But when you really take a look at, you know, I think for most people, we have to take a look at that dividend from CNB and, and it's so much more than a dividend because we, we want that number to be, it's the blood, sweat and tears for those individuals that work so hard. Just a few weeks ago, I met with the team from CFED and we talked about how we're all connected, but those dollars go directly to scholarship funding a lot of times. And, you know, that's, that's through our scholarship for the uh, $2,000 undergrad, but also we have some graduate uh, potential for individuals for so many semesters, but too, I want to really touch on, you know, the, the fact that there's been key people that have worked through the Cherokee Nation Education Foundation to provide internships to CNB. So when you're working over here and we're providing a dividend that comes in that helps provide scholarship dollars to put kids and uh, young adults to school. But then also, too, we, we need to chart out a career path for them. And so one of the biggest and best places in Oklahoma to work is the Cherokee Nation business arm. And whether that's as an accountant, whether that's as a clerk, whether that's as a vice president, whatever you strive to be, we want to be able to chart a career path for those individuals. So I think it, it comes to life very much. And especially if you're sitting in the seat uh, at a college institution as a advisor to individuals that come in, um, you know, money is one thing, but how can we show them the path? We can show them potential obstacles, but with that obstacle, there is a path around that. And, and, you know, and a lot of it's tenacity, it's resilience, it's determination. And I think if you, if you come in and you put that, that good feeling into that, but we need the individuals at CMB to understand what big portion that they play in the future. You know, when we're talking about the next seven generations, whether it's education, uh, that's going to lead to a career in agriculture, whether that's going to lead to a, a business career, where that's going to lead to a career in the film office. Yeah. All right. Travis, recently CNB created Cultural and Economic Development, what we call CED, um, which is a standalone branch underneath that CNB umbrella. So can you describe the different initiatives and programs under CED and how this works to uh, benefit people in Cherokee communities? Sure, yeah. <clears throat> so actually I started with, with uh, Cherokee Nation as an intern. So those programs really do take you, can take you through a credit journey if, you, if you're along for the ride, I think, right. yeah. So yeah, our CED, um, brand new initiative, just a year old. And so it, CED really, cultural and economic development, really gave the opportunity under Cherokee Nation businesses to group those initiatives that are benefit us through economic development and through our cultural initiatives. So some of those are some decade ventures, decade long ventures for CMB, like our cultural tourism program, which has a portfolio of museums and gift shops and welcome centers. Of course, the work that you and your team do with the film office and original content. Um, and then some very new adventures, uh, ventures like our, um, our, meat, our meat processing plant and our PPE plant. Um, and so this is a great opportunity to, to pair these ventures together under one group. And we're really excited about the future. Absolutely. Um, so Deputy Chief Warner, uh, Travis just spoke about some of the different um, initiatives that CMB supports through CED. Can you tell us how you see these priorities reflected for individuals and families in Cherokee communities? Oh, you know, uh, what, when Trav talks about the, the cultural piece of that, and we, I, I instantly go to Cherokee Lifeways and you get back into our communities um, and you get to know some of these families, you get into the deep recesses of these communities, you get down into the weeds uh, with these individuals and you see the things that, that they hold near and dear. It, uh, there's a direct connection to what we want to do to perpetuate that to future generations that uh, like me, if I, I didn't grow up in a traditional Cherokee family, but we talked about those same sensical values that, that we all have. But what Travis's team and Molly's team and that, that put together, they put together that opportunity for kids that did not grow up or individuals in that. And so it's a direct link to to figure out, you know, because we all want to know where did we come from? And we, we look back to our past and then we want to know where we're at right now. How does that help us dictate where we're going in the future? So there's a very direct correlation. And I think it gives these communities a sense of pride that other people from other walks of life care about what they do and they see it. You know, some may pass by and just say, well, that, 
that lady's been doing that for 50 years. Well, what is she doing? And then once you get down into it, you, you learn that story. And that is really the story is where the relationships are built. Mm -hmm. That's the, where the connections are made. And uh, without this department doing these things, I don't think that we would be as active as we see individuals being today. I mean, there is a, there's a huge race to figure out, you know, you see it all over 23 and me and all these, where do I come from? But here at the Cherokee nation, we, we're putting these things, there's pages and pages and volumes and bringing these things to light old photos or old documents from, from a time past. And, and then that relates to, that helps you understand why that granny did things a certain way and what, you know, where her ancestors come from. And then, but you know, we're, you, there's an opportunity to lose so much with the technology of today's world. But I think we can take that technology and plug that in. And that's exactly what this department has done to be able to help unfold a new bright future for what lies ahead. Great. And Travis, would you share some examples um, of the ways that CED perpetuates culture and history and language uh, through our programs? Sure, yeah. Um, you know, we have a great opportunity to um, share authentic Cherokee history and culture. That's for our Cherokee citizens and for our visitors at large. So we operate a number of museums throughout Cherokee Nation, which I, I hope folks have had a chance to, to check out. But our newest one, the Cherokee Nation Anna Mitchell Cultural and Welcome Center, you know, just opened this fall. And in the first full month of operation, you know, we saw visitors from 37 different states, five different countries, wow. you know, and so, and, and that namesake for that site, Anna Mitchell, we talk about perpetuating culture. There's somebody who's a revivalist, who, who paved their own way, who revived Cherokee pottery. And now we get to share that legacy with, with our citizens and with the world. And so that's just one example of the way that we're, we're trying to perpetuate and share authentic Cherokee history and culture. Our other museums, um, you know, we work very hard to get um, our story out to the public and we do that through, you know, our visitor facing operations like our museums, but we also work really hard to share our culture through our programs and events. Um, we, we really work to try to, um, you know, I believe our artists are our greatest storytellers. And so we really, um, and everything we do, we try to elevate our, our artist community, especially our national treasures. Um, there's there's not many great stewards of, of culture that are better than our national treasures, and they work very hard in their their arts and their culture. And um, you know, we're blessed to work with departments across Cherokee Nation, like our great language department, who's revitalizing. Where um, you know they're on the cutting edge of re revitalization, and so we get to share some of those efforts through our sites. Um, and so we're continually trying to find ways to connect Cherokee history and culture with our citizens and with visitors from afar. Absolutely. That's excellent. And Travis, you know, even kind of leading into that, I want to make sure, Jennifer, that I give you some time to talk about the film office. I mean, this has been a this has been something that's been I've been really excited about. And, uh, you know, I want you to be able to take a little time and to tell us more about what's going on, where we've come from and kind of where we're headed. Thank you. Yeah, so uh, the Cherokee Film Office, as everyone knows it, we call it Cherokee Film now because, we, you know, we're a film office, but we're also creating content. So we call it Cherokee Film now. Um, yeah, so it all started with OCO TV, which hopefully everybody has seen. So, uh, you know, eight years ago, we started that show and, and we proved that, you know, we could tell our own story ourselves um, and we could provide jobs um, into telling in telling that story. And, um, and there was an appetite um, from, you know, the general public who wanted to learn more and they wanted to learn the actual real uh, story of the Cherokee people, who we actually are, our history, our culture, and our and our language too. And so, um, I think with um, OCO proving that that was something that was that could be very successful, uh, you know, we pitched the idea of creating a film office that um, could not only continue to create that kind of content, but that could also be a central hub for the many requests that Cherokee Nation gets to, you know to help a filmmaker with a project that has a Cherokee character in it. Um, and, you know, there's just various different reasons why we wanted to do that. So we created our film office to essentially take the work of OCO TV and blow it up on a global scale and create opportunities for more people, um, not only Cherokees, but other citizens of other tribes to be able to tell their tribe stories or whatever stories they want to bring um, focus to um, while, you know, getting rid of those stereotypes. Um, and so we have been doing that with the film office. Um, 
We have helped with language revitalization projects as well, being able to work with um, with that group. Um, and we're working with cultural tourism now to help, you know, get more um, more focus um, on video projects to help tell the cultural tourism story and get those into our museums. Um, so a lot of synergy with CED and, and being able to take all that, all those initiatives and put that technology in this place, you know, to be able to help to tell our Cherokee story. Um, and we also want to bring up and educate um, here in the near future. You'll be seeing a lot of new initiatives coming from our team um, that will help engage younger people to get them to see that there is possibly a career path in telling stories and doing it for film and television. Um, and we have the resources here now and we have the support. So thank you for that. Thanks to CNB for that. And um, we're excited. Yeah. Well, Deputy Chief, CNB's first business venture was um, founded in 1969 as a small manufacturing plant which brought jobs to Stillwell, Oklahoma and Ader County. And we've heard about the economic as well as human impacts that CNB has throughout the reservation, the state and beyond. So thinking back, can you say, what do you think, where might Cherokee Nation be without CNB? You know, that's a, that's a really good question. That, that's a tough question that, that one, I, you know, I think our trajectory has been uh, such a steep climb, you know, and, and I'm sure there was time, I take you back. Uh, my grandfather was a veteran of the Korean War. And so when he left the war and he come home, he married my grandmother there in Stillwell. They, they started raising their family. It was tough to make a living for a Cherokee family at that time. And they moved to Stillwell. I think perhaps, um, you know, what that provided and then coming in in 1969 as, as a beacon of hope. And, and today you see that that hope is so widespread among, look at, look at how far we've expanded because I remember uh, rolling Oklahoma, you know, bingo. It was bingo night. We went over with grandparents. You, you do all these things and then how that's evolved. You look at we used to, the diversified portfolio now known as Cherokee Federal and the different things that we do. And when I first came on to tribal council in 2015, we talked about how much revenue was gaming versus other sources of revenue. And now how we've started, those have started to mirror one another and even started to outclimb our gaming revenue that that gives hope for so many people that there's such a way that we can impact not only our culture, not only our life way, our language, um, our career paths, but impact so many rural communities across uh, Northeast Oklahoma, as Chief Hoskins said, and I'll, I'll continue to say this, that many of people in the world, the other parts of the world have forgotten about, but the Cherokee Nation will never forget about it. So I, I think that it was, it's definitely something that's been very important to be able to have that business arm. I wanna thank the leaders at the time that were able to, to do the right things and to separate that out. So you have your government, you have your business arm, that way it's able to be nimble and, and to do the things in a business world that is expected um, of, a, of a business. You look now the way Oklahoma is situated with all the federally recognized tribes, it makes me proud to know that we're a billion dollar industry. We are a billion dollar company that represents a group of stakeholders known as Cherokee citizens. Mm -hmm. that, it, that makes me so proud and, the, and to think that, you know, I'm, I'm looking towards what a, you know, one day the creator, if I'm blessed to have grandkids, they have more hope than I have. And that's, a, that's the thing that a lot of Cherokee's families, I was raised to raise your kids. You know, my dad said, I'm raising you to be better than me. So I'm raising my kids to be better than me. We raise our business arm so that each generation has that same opportunity. So I, I couldn't tell you what it would look like without this. We, I'm sure we would, uh, we would still have our federal partners, we would hope, but that, that falls back to trust responsibility and promises being kept mm -hmm. and being made. Uh, but now we're making our own way uh, and doing things that I hope makes everyone proud. I know I'm proud of all the people that have, that have paved the way and there's so many, too many to list and there's so many that are there today there's so many that are yet to come. So very proud day. Indeed. Okay, final question for you, Travis. CED has obviously seen a lot of growth as, as we've discussed here today. Can you tell us what may be in the future? Any projects that you wanna tell us about? Sure, yeah. So we, um, you know, we've got a, a number of projects we're working on that we're very excited about. One of the projects I think Cherokee citizens um, are gonna be really proud of when we see it come to fruition is, 
you know, Deputy Chief and, and Chief Hoskin provided leadership over the transition of the Cherokee Heritage Center to, to Cherokee Nation and Cherokee Nation businesses through the Cherokee Heritage Center Act of 2020. And so the, um, you know, the Heritage Center used to be operated by a nonprofit, Cherokee National Historical Society, and they were great stewards of that history and culture for the decades. Um, sometimes when Cherokee Nation didn't have the resources to tell our story, you know. And so um, the work that they, they have done continues, and we're really excited about the future through this alignment with CED and Cherokee Nation and the leadership. Um, we're working on a, a, a master site plan that will envisions a 120,000 square foot new museum. Um, but I think what's really unique is, is um, you know, we, we talk to stakeholders about what, what the Cherokee Heritage Center meant to them. And one of the things that came up was how rooted in the land on the, the grounds of the Cherokee Female Seminary, the original one that burned. And um, so we're taking that to heart as we, we work through the master site plan um, and really envisioning a campus where Cherokee citizens can come and celebrate. They can connect with their history if they weren't raised in a, in a you know, traditional community or they want to um, you know, come learn from a national treasure. There'll be a space to do that. There'll be a space for performing arts. There'll be a space for um, where we can go in and, you know, like your basket you see here, you may be able to meet the person who made your basket. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, we're, we've got a big vision. And I think our leadership has challenged us for a big vision. And so, you know, in after the first year, I think, you know, we'll start having some more announcements come out, but we're working very hard and diligently on planning. And um, there's a big future for the Cherokee Heritage Center that we're excited about. So exciting. Excellent. All right. Well, that'll do it for us. Thank you both for joining us here today. We appreciate it. Uh, I think a lot of people probably have learned a lot, answered a lot of questions. So thank you. Thank you. And if you'd like to learn more about CED, uh, you can do so by visiting our websites like visitcherokeenation.com or cherokee.film. Okay, one important aspect of Cherokee Nation businesses is our ability to provide good jobs for Cherokee Nation citizens who are invested in making a difference for our people. Tim Roberts is a citizen who plays an important international role at CNB. Take a look. You know, most of my family had been and lived around that area since, since the removal. Going back probably further than we can trace, all the family's been here. If you go a little further, it's Southwest City, Missouri. Um, and you'll see that in a lot of the role documents. Um, the, you know, when they went into the Dawes Commission, they said they were from Southwest City, but they were, it was all this, this land right through here. They're um, people that lived off the land. They raised cattle. Um, some of them spoke Cherokee and some of them didn't. Being raised Cherokee to me is just intensely and overwhelmingly dedicated to the community. You, you take care of each other and, and, and everybody around you. At Cherokee Nation Businesses, I'm over our International Expansion Division, which is a goal we have set to take some of the federal contracting expertise we've developed over the last eight to 10 years and expand that to some of the global installations that the federal government operates. Most of our, our contracts are, say, um, providing, for example, IT services at a federal site for somebody like the USDA. Um, and one of them was under the Air Force, doing some uh, civil engineering type work. And the Department of State had heard about our reputation um, and actually called us and, and, and said, hey, we'd like to invite you to bid on some of this work um, that's around. So we got the call, we responded, and fast forward a little bit, they said, actually, you, you can have this contract. And it was for $200 million. Uh, which was by far the largest single award contract. The problem was it's not only is it international, it's in a, it's in a danger zone. The first international office was in Baghdad, Iraq. That, that was a project where we took our best people. So, you know, ahead of our HR group, our finance, legal, um, you name it, everybody had to step in and figure out how to do business in Iraq. It was sort of a life's calling kind of moment, you know? Like you, you wake up and say, Whatever I did yesterday, I don't do anymore. From now on, this is what I do. And we loved it. After we had proven successful in Baghdad, um, we, we approached them about working in Abu Dhabi and they gave us the opportunity to do that. And that led to what is now what we call our Diplomatic Support Division contract in the UAE.
Thank you for sticking around, Deputy Chief Warner. Uh, and we are joined by 1839 Cherokee Meat Company plant manager, Adrian Sinclair, to talk about the origination and development of this much needed state-of-the-art facility here in the Cherokee Nation. Thank you so much for being here, both of you. Well, thank you. Thank you for having us. Yeah, Adrian, so uh, it's a popular topic in the Cherokee Nation. Tell us uh, about the name 1839 Cherokee Meat Company and the overall goal of the facility. So. 1839, uh, the name com stems from the uh, uh, Constitution signed after removal. And so the goal of this uh, facility is to kind of address some of those uh, food sovereignty issues that we witnessed throughout the uh, pandemic, uh, through COVID and all of those uh, things that were missing on the Cherokee Nation, as well as growing the uh, economy of the Cherokee Nation as well. Yeah. And Deputy Chief Warner, as a person who grew up around livestock and outdoor sports, hunting, fishing, what do you feel are the benefits of the Cherokee Nation having a facility, a meat processing facility? Oh, it's a, uh, you know, you can, you can weigh out the benefits for days and days. Uh, you know, really, as Adrian said, during the pandemic, you know, when, when everything kind of just shut down and everybody went on divert, um, you know, we started to learn more about the processes across the United States. One of them was what, where are we getting our protein? What mm -hmm. are we gonna do? And, and that benefit, so all the local farmers and, and everybody was having trouble uh, trying to get some things done. So we, we, we took a look at that. So that, that's one benefit, but he also hit on something else, that food sovereignty. You know, as we start to uh, get down the road uh, and kind of coming out of where we've been on divert for so long throughout the pandemic, um, I think it's time that natives really take this opportunity to help educate other individuals uh, that, that are in offices like the USDA and different things and take some of these old food programs that we've been on like food distribution and how can we, how can we help them modify our menu uh, to add things that are native grown from native owned companies, from native tribes that are all, not just the Cherokee tribe, but all over mm -hmm. the United States because this has to be a joint effort. It's, it's, it's not that much different from the other things when we try to come in and and battle poverty and everything. That's not just a one uh, tribal issue, that's everybody. So coming together, so kind of helping us solve some of these food sovereignty issues and uh, and getting back and, and what better way to say, you know, I'm, I'm coming in, I'm, I'm setting the dinner table and my wife comes in and then everything, we've got it all set and we tell these kids and we sit down and we, we look at one another and say, hey, today I want you to know that this meat that you're eating, this was produced in the Cherokee Nation. This was processed in the Cherokee Nation by the 1839 Meat Company. Hopefully that spends, Dad, what's 1839? And you can take that teachable moment, but yet you know that you're, not only are you sinking your teeth into something savory that many people enjoy, but that sense of pride, that sense of ownership as a stakeholder to what the Cherokee government stands for and what CMB stands for. I, I don't think you can put a value on that. It's priceless. Absolutely. Adrian, beyond the benefits to local ranchers and hunters, does the 1839 Cherokee Meat Company offer anything to those who are not ranchers and hunters but still want access to great quality meats? Yes, absolutely. Uh, so we are, we are obviously wanting to grow uh, the Cherokee Nation and uh, benefit those uh, folks uh, and the native grown like uh, Deputy Chief Warner had mentioned before, but uh, we're also open to uh, the public as well. And so uh, we wanna help to grow our community as well and be a staple in the community here at 1839 Cherokee Meat Company. Deputy, what do you see long-term for this facility and the local market? Do you think will wild game be able to be processed there or what's the future hold? Yes, I, I think uh, the, you know, they, the way that the lines have all been set up and we've started to learn about more about the process. And, you know, once you start, if you start with cattle, then you're going to come in and do wild game. You got to complete clean out. You can't use the same railing, all these different things because we are a USDA certified uh, facility which was something that was very important that we did first and foremost. Uh, you know, we want to make sure our public feels good about what they're getting. But yes, wild game, uh, you know, we're right in the middle of deer season. We just come out of uh, rifle season. The season still here in Oklahoma goes till January 15th for bow hunters. And uh, so we're looking forward to that. But the future, I think, um, you know, if you start to look at the restaurant market and you start to look at other things, other tribal nations have done this, a very similar model and have been doing this for some time. And they, they have cornered the market in, in places like New York and Denver and, 
in other areas. I think uh, with our environment, our weather, and the ability of our farmers and ranchers to grow good quality beef and, and to see that around, I think the sky's the limit on what we can do. But we want to be able to to hone in on, on certain things and, and bison is another we have our herd. And once we kind of get that to a sustainable level that we feel like that we can start to provide that precious protein to our elders, to the individuals that are on the food distribution program, whether it may be something that's quarterly. We're, these are all just ideas, nothing set in stone the way we want to do it, but we're kind of opening the door to anything, any opportunity. But I think the big piece of it is just like in education, you've got to get the degree, you've got to get the grades, you've got to do all the different things. So that way when the door of opportunity opens, you have the ability to walk through that door and that USDA certification part of that process and getting it all set up to where the workers are in a good, safe environment. Uh, our customers are satisfied, you know, and the quality that's coming off that line is, uh, is impeccable. I think, uh, man, we're, I'm, I'm excited. Set up for success. It's so yes. exciting. Yeah. Um, Adrian, uh, what's being done to ensure safety in the products going to the consumer? So there's a lot of different practices. You know, uh, we we uh, have standard operation uh, sanitation procedures that are daily, uh, ensuring that our facility is clean and uh, it's so we can provide a safe, clean product to the general public. Uh, we also uh, try to keep our employees uh, safe as well uh, inside the facility, wearing cut gear, uh, stuff like that, and that all builds up to a good, clean product uh, that somebody can be proud of when they go to the grocery store and they buy this, you know, they can look forward to that product. Yeah. So I've heard the prices are pretty good. Um, Deputy Chief, uh, the facility is, um, should also aid in some food insecurity relief, correct? Absolutely. You know, just as, uh, and that was kind of the, one of the driving forces, I will never shy away from good vegetable protein like beans and other things, but you know, there, there was just so much, we were getting so much uh, fruits and vegetables and, and other stuff that were perishable items. Um, there was a lack of protein in a lot of our mm -hmm. food boxes that, you know, of what people were grown accustomed to. I think we can grow our herd. I think we can utilize uh, our farmers and our ranchers to make sure that, that we're able to, uh, and hopefully one day as, as the USDA continues to work on tribal relations, that we can poss possibly supply our Cherokee individuals through our food distribution program, some of this very meat that will aid in that food security. Maybe there's another time, there's another, There's always storms on the horizon. We wanna be prepared. So I, I, I suspect that we're more prepared today, I know, than we were yesterday at being able, that the next time that we have to have some types of food distribution efforts that are in conjunction with or in addition to what we already do, I'm, I'm very hopeful that we can be able to pass out that meat. And, and you know, our elders, you know, mm -hmm. that a lot of them that just can't get out and, and can't do the things that they were used to. I mean, it's, I can't wait to be able to take and, uh, and be able to knock on their door and hand them something. You know, we've, uh, it's just a special day in the Cherokee Nation to be able to provide for, for individuals that sometimes have trouble mm -hmm. providing for themselves and the opportunity for the others that, that work a good job, that, that may be traveling back and forth from Tulsa to Tahlequah to be able to slide in that 1839 meat company and take that good meat back home. Yeah, Adrian, it must be pretty cool to be able to have that sense of pride in what you're doing working at the meat processing facility. Um, and it's fantastic to have the ability to help alleviate basic needs of our own citizens. So um, I'm sure you have purchased a steak or a pork chop perhaps already. Um, and so I would like to know, what do you think about the meat? I think it's a uh, it's a really good product. That uh, you know, uh, my favorite cut personally is the ribeye, and uh, I bought I bought some uh, after our grand opening, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, cooked them up for me and my wife, and uh, we really enjoyed it. So uh, I hope that uh, everybody gets to come by and purchase some meat and uh, can enjoy it as much as we did. Well, and I I agree, and I'll tell you right now that my my assistant. Uh, She's went out, several of her friends, and just rave reviews have come back. And, and one other thing, I'm, you know, I'm always uh, here to uh, try to fight for education and different things. Uh, there's so many ag programs out there, and they do all these meat judging, they land judge, they survey, they do different things. There's 
our small colleges, our two-year institutions, and our four that, that have agriculture programs. Maybe that we're always hopeful there are these ways that we can uh, help these individuals out, come by and take a look at what, you know, what teach people what is marbling, what's the proper way, what's this side of beef look like, what's this side of swine, and all the different things uh, that come in into detail when you're, when you're doing that. So, uh, like I said earlier, the sky's the limit for this place. I think um, we, we've built it on a good spiritual foundation, Jen, and uh, you know, I can't wait to see what, what holds in the future. I think everyone's excited about this. I gotta say, agiosi, which is my favorite Cherokee <laughs> word, which means I'm hungry now. Yeah. So yeah. thank you so much yes, for being here um, and for filling us in on the exciting new services for our citizens. So you can find more information about the 1839 Cherokee Meat Company on their website, 1839cherokeemeatco.com or on their Facebook page. And you'll see lots of pictures of the meat people have prepared in their homes. It looks delicious. So thanks so much for being here, both of you. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, District 12 Tribal Counselor Dora Patskowski delivers her remarks. OCO, I am Dora Patskowski, Tribal Counselor for District 12. It is my honor to represent my home area on the Council of the Cherokee Nation. One of our most solemn duties is creating budgets every year to fund the essential programs our citizens need to thrive. That includes housing, health care, education, career development, and a wide array of human service needs. Our tribal government is the sole owner or shareholder of Cherokee Nation businesses. And the success of Cherokee Nation businesses allows us, as policymakers, to fund the governmental services the Cherokee people utilize day in and day out. CMB also continues to support the tribe in our pursuit of preserving Cherokee culture and heritage. It is a perfect example of how the goals of our tribal government are fulfilled by our business endeavors. The future of the Cherokee language and our shared culture is brighter than ever thanks to CMB's commitment. CMB is not just the economic engine of Cherokee Nation, but for all of Northeast Oklahoma. As we grow, diversify, and succeed at the corporate level, our families and communities benefit at the local level. We are blessed to have a workforce at CMB as well as at Cherokee Nation that is dedicated to continuing our prolonged success. A special wado to each and every one of our employees for ensuring CMB remains not just a market leader in entertainment, federal contracting, cultural tourism, and a number of other industries but that CMB also remains purpose-driven because the people who benefit the most from this commitment to our tribal nation are some of our most vulnerable Cherokee citizens, especially youth and elders. Wado. Wado, Councilor Patskowski. Well, I'm here to close out the show for you today uh, to talk about working for Cherokee Nation businesses. And really, working for CNB is unlike any other job, and that's because as employees of our businesses, we know that the work that we do every day is benefiting our tribe and our people directly. There's great satisfaction in that and power in sharing that joint purpose. So at Cherokee Film, our mission is to increase the presence of Native Americans in the film and TV industries while creating opportunities for economic development and, of course, jobs in the Cherokee Nation. That work will have a lasting impact for Cherokee people and is already changing the narrative in film and TV to be more inclusive of us. So we see it every day. We are helping Cherokees to get their foot in the door in the already robust entertainment business. But 
At the same time, we're also creating content ourselves, like here today, and we're doing that with a ground up approach, like OCO TV, which is created for us and by us, and it gives the world an accurate portrayal of Cherokee people, our history, our culture, and our language. Hopefully you've seen it. If not, check it out. As we expand Cherokee film with the support of our businesses and our tribe, we are taking the business aspects of film and TV into our own hands, and we're doing it the way that works for us. So again, with CNB's investment in our film office and the support of Principal Chief Hoskin, we are able to change the native narrative and disrupt an industry that has long overlooked our people and worse, promulgated harmful stereotypes that have had extremely negative effects on our people. Like all of the other branches of CNB, we are doing this important work while providing good jobs for our citizens and for our local allies. At Cherokee Film, it is our pleasure bringing you this show, Chala Gee, wherever we are, from the comfort and safety of our soundstage here in the Cherokee Nation. We're so grateful for all of the support, and we look forward to bringing you even more Cherokee content in the future. So check it out. Thank you for joining us today, and now we leave you with the musical stylings of Tommy Wildcat. Dota dago, hunty, until we see each other again. Wado. Merry Christmas. Lord, I go in the garden. I need to lucky.